Hello, welcome to Math 073. My name is Rob Reynolds, and today we're looking at section 2.5. We're going to continue our discussion about graphing linear functions, uh, looking at uh, the different forms in slope-intercept and in standard form. So again, we need to know what the y-intercept looks like. If I give it to you as y equals mx plus b, uh, this is called slope-intercept form. Uh, and the y-intercept, sometimes I'll give it to you in ax plus by is equal to c, or standard form. If I give it to you in standard form, then in order to find a y-intercept, uh, the goal would be to let uh, x equal 0. Uh, over here, the y-intercept is more plain. Um, we can just clearly see the y-intercept is that b term. Um, and then the x-intercept, to find the x-intercept, uh, we're going to, if it's in standard form, we're going to let y equal 0. Um, and over here, to find an x-intercept, you would still let y be 0 uh, if it's in uh, slope-intercept form. So here we go. Our first one, it looks like it's in standard form where the value of a is 5 and the value of b is 2. Um, I'm going to use the definition that I gave to you in an earlier video. Uh, monkeys wouldn't prefer apples over bananas. That's the fastest way to find slope. So I don't have to spend time uh, solving for y and put it into y equals mx plus b form, which is usually what the textbooks encourage you to do. But I found that students find this a little bit easier. I'll take the opposite of the first term. And the first term is 5, so the opposite of the a term. a is 5. Opposite of 5 is negative 5 over the b term. And boom, I've got slope. Um, another way to do this is, well, in fact, it doesn't even ask you to find uh, the slope, but it's nice to have the slope so we can compare it. It asks for x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So to find an x-intercept, we let y be 0, and to find a y-intercept, you can let x be 0. So you can kind of form this nice t-chart, um, x and y. And we're always letting one of those values be 0. So if I let y be 0, that kind of drops this term out. Uh, and then I divide both sides by 5, and I get a 2. Repeating this process, this time for uh, to find the y-intercept, I let x be 0. If you let x be 0, that drops this term out, because 5 times 0 is 0. If I divide both sides by 2, I'll get a 5. So boom, two points determine a line. The x-intercept is where the line crosses the x-axis. The y-intercept at 0, 5. And sure enough, look at this. The slope checks because what? I'm going down 5 and running 2. And if you wanted to do that again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, run 2, you could almost fill up your graph uh, before you drew that line, which is sometimes nice to do. So you have that nice straight edge. If, oof, uh, if you have a credit card or a... a uh, a student ID that might be nice to uh, to draw that nice that nice line straight. Um, good, the author does it similarly, and there's uh, they used a T chart method, but they had the same points here. They just checked with another point. I would encourage you to check with the slope uh, by doing the monkeys wouldn't prefer the wouldn't prefer is the negative a. Um, apples over bananas. So monkeys wouldn't prefer apples over bananas is a great way to check uh, to see your points line up. Graphing, this is a little bit easier. This is called the start value. It's the y-intercept. So I would ask you to start here at the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 0, 1. So I'll put a point here. And then the slope is rise over run. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rise 1 and run 3. So from the start value, rise 1, run 3, I would fill up the graph, rise 1, run 3, rise 1, run 3. Instead of going up and to the right, I could go down 1 and to the left. And again, pull out a nice straight edge and make a nice straight line. Start value here is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. This time the slope. Uh, I would always encourage you, if the slope is out front, that's the same thing as negative 3 over 4. So that means go down, and I say in Reynolds' world, because my last name is Reynolds, you always run to the right. So I'll always make the denominator to the right. Now this is equivalent to 3 over negative 4, but this just looks funny. 
So you could go up and to the left, it's equivalent. It's just normally we stick the negative out front or up top. So let's do this part first. From the one start value that I have, which is 0, 4, I would go down 3 and then right 4. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Do it again, down 3. And then I would go maybe up 3 and to the left 4 to find that nice straight line. Again, put some arrows at the end so I know that it, this just continues forever to the left and to the right. This is interesting. It means for every value of x that you plug in, y will always be 2. So you could let x be 1, but y is 2. You could let x be negative 5, but guess what? y is 2. You could let x be 7, but y is always 2. So if the y value is always 2, this is going to be a nice horizontal line y equals 2. Just incidentally, the slope of this, we'll learn later, is 0 slope. And you can write the word 0. Uh, it's a nice horizontal line. So this is confusing because this kind of is parallel to the x-axis. Um, but the line of the x-axis, the equation of the x-axis, is actually y equals 0. Uh, and that's confusing. So yes, this is the y-axis, but the equation of the y-axis is x equals 0. So don't get the axis mixed up with the actual equation. So if it says y equals 0, think this nice horizontal line. Uh, if you plot a bunch of points, you can see there's the horizontal line y equals always 2. And similarly, the x equaling 2 is a vertical line. One way you can remember that is uh, I introduced Mr. X. Mr. X has two legs, and so with two legs you're going to stand up. Mrs. Y only has one leg, and so with one leg you would eventually fall down. So the Y is the horizontal, and the X is the vertical. Be careful here. Again, this looks like the equation of the Y axis. Don't get the axis mixed up with the equation of the line, which is X equals 2. They're parallel. And then look at this. The slope of this vertical line is no slope or undefined slope, which we'll talk about in a later video as well. Plotting points. And here's the author's nice little graph, x equals 2. So for every value of y, it doesn't matter if it's 4, 1, or negative 4, x is always 2. So horizontal lines uh, are y equals something. Vertical lines are x equals something. Lines are parallel if they have the same slope. So if I give you um, an equation of the line y equals negative 2, I can see x, I can see that the slope is negative 2. Over here, instead of spending the time to solve for y, I would use my monkeys wouldn't prefer apples over bananas definition. That's the fastest way to find slope given something in standard form. So I would take the opposite of your a term, which is your 8, so negative 8 over 4, and look at that, negative 2. If it's the same, then the lines are parallel. I wouldn't spend the time graphing it, although if you wanted to look at the graph, you could certainly see that they're parallel. But graphs sometimes can be deceiving. They may look parallel because they're close. This slope uh, could be very, very close to this. But I would actually go for the numbers itself instead of the graph. Perpendicular lines, they always talk about um, opposite reciprocals. Five times... Uh, negative one-fifth is negative one. So that's kind of the definition they use. But I would rather use um, opposite reciprocal. So if I give you that the slope is three-fourths perpendicular, and this is the symbol for perpendicular, would be the opposite of that and the reciprocal. If the slope is five, perpendicular slope to five would be the opposite, which is negative. And then this is really like five over one. And so the reciprocal of that would be one over five. Looking at this, um, again, perpendicular lines form nice 90-degree angles. So perpendicular here, the slope is 2. Perpendicular slope would be negative 1 half, which is what they have here. So looks like I'm picking off the slope here. Y equals, or excuse me, M equals 4 because it's in the form Y equals MX plus B. That's called slope-intercept form. Here I've got standard form. So again, the value of A is 1 the number in front of x, the value of b is 4. So the slope is negative 
A over B. Monkeys wouldn't prefer apples over bananas. So look at this. This is opposite reciprocal, so therefore they really are perpendicular. Again, you can spend the time to look at that. Uh, but it's hard to see if that's a 90 degrees or a 90.5 degrees, so don't go by looks. So this one says graph uh, the line. Sometimes uh, the easiest way, we started this by x and y intercepts. So here we go. An x-intercept uh, would be letting y be 0, and a y-intercept would be letting x be 0. Uh, to find an x-intercept, if you cover up the y's, uh, and divide through by, you get negative 9 sevenths, which I would not encourage you to plot. So let's just kind of ignore that point for a moment. Um, let's move on to the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we're going to let x be 0. And if you let x be 0, that's clear. y equals negative 9. That's a nice point. And then I would do the monkeys wouldn't prefer apples over bananas to find another point. So all you really need is one really nice point, which you found, 0, negative 9. Well, let's go find the slope by doing negative a over b. So here's my, be careful, this is not in the form ax plus by, so I'd have to maybe reorganize this. This is the same thing as 7x plus y equals negative 9. So I can see that the a term here is 7, uh, whoops, uh, the a term is 7, and the b term is the number in front, the coefficient 1, which is 1. So negative 7 over 1 which means goes down 7 over 1, which is hard to do. I'm off my graph, so I'll go up 7, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and over 1. So if I'm graphing this line, all I wanted you to see on this problem is all we need is one nice point. Don't try to graph something that's not nice and go find the slope. For this one, sometimes they say f at x or g at x. I just want you to recognize that as a y. So 4y plus 3x is equal to 12 plus 3x. If you subtract off 3x from both sides, the x term will drop off. 4y is equal to 12. If you divide through by 4, y equals 3. And again, that's a nice horizontal line. For every x value that you put in, y will always be 3. If the x-intercept and the y-intercept are bad, we could still find our slope, which is negative a over the b term. So I've got slope. The problem is, is my x-intercept is horrible, and my y-intercept is horrible. To find an x-intercept, you let y be 0. To find a y-intercept, you let x be 0. But look at this. If you let y be 0, this term goes away, and I divide through by 3 to get 10 thirds. That's horrible. I'm not going to try to graph 10 thirds. To find a y-intercept, I'm going to let x be 0, divide through by negative 4, and I get negative 10 fourths, which reduces to 5 halves, which isn't too bad. But I, again, I would encourage you uh, to find a nicer point. And it's fairly easy to do. The first thing we want to do is solve uh, this thing for y. So we had uh, 3x on both sides. So let's subtract off 3x. So we get negative 4y is equal to negative 3x plus 10. And then divide every term through by negative 4. So y is equal to 3 fourths x. Uh, minus 10 fourths, which is the same thing as that 5 halves. So I could type in the 5 halves here. Uh, every time you type in a fraction, I would encourage you to do it in parentheses. So 3 fourths x on your graphing calculator, if you've never done this, hit your y equals. And instead of doing um, 10 fourths, I could do 5 halves, but it's okay. You can do uh, 10 fourths if you want. I'm going to hit zoom 6 just to look at the graph. But if you want to find a nice point, which is really our goal here, I wouldn't hit zoom 6 or graph or trace. Hit instead second graph, which is a nice table setup. Uh, I'm gonna my table. I messed around with my table. I'm gonna start at zero and go by increments of one. So I hit second window, which is a table setup. Make sure that you're at auto zero and change is one. So now hit second graph and I get a nice table setup. There's a nice point two negative one. There's another point six two. So I I could pick off some nice points on my calculator. I'm gonna use this one. 2, negative 1 looks like a, a nice point. So using my graphing calculator, I'm going to plot the point 2, negative 1. And then from that point, I can do my slope, which is rise 3, run 4, and find another nice point. Well, I could even found this point 3, 4, 5, 6, 2. I could have found 6, 2 off my calculator as well. It's right here, 6, 2. And I can see 10, 5 is a pretty nice point. So you could pick off points from your graphing calculator as well. Um, 
But sure enough, when I hit trace, this line is going to look like the line I'm going to draw here. Um, I can even hit uh, trace uh, to enter, and I can see those nice points. Uh, I think 6 was a nice point too, 6, 2. So use your graphing calculator uh, to help you graph uh, and find a nice point. I hope that's helpful. Email me with questions. Thanks.